Hi everyone, it's Jerry. I have an excellent game to share with you from round two of the 2023 Tata Steel Masters. On the white end, Anish Giri, and he's playing against Digu Kesh. Opening wise, it's a Queen's Gambit declined. Bishop b4 signals the Ragozan defense. An early minor piece imbalance, black with the unopposed dark square bishop. And now in this move 8, D takes c4. Not so used to seeing the tension released in general prior to the king bishop moving. Black is expediting white's development now. Gets to recapture in one move on c4. Black has good reason to play in this way. Black is well aware of the timing element and how he is helping the bishop to develop by capturing so soon. What is the good reason for taking in this way? Well, first of all, I'd like to say that Black wants to work with his dark square bishop. Black wants to, in other words, challenge white pawns that are on dark squares. The fewer pawns on dark, the more possibilities for Black's dark square bishop. So in other words, this guy on d4 is in the crosshairs. Black wants to challenge that point. But to challenge that point while this tension is present is not a good idea, and here's why. White could continue with c takes d and saddle black with an isolated pawn. Is this point a liability or an asset for black? I believe it is seen more so as a liability. Black is also down a pawn in this position, and it's not so easy to regain it. You take on c4, there's a way the d5 pawn can simply fall. Okay. In this game, black gives up the d5 point, doesn't have to worry about losing it now, and continues with c5 only on this move 9. Looks to extend the scope of the bishop with c5, you might say. From here, it's castles on pinning the knight. c takes d4, and how do we recapture? With the queen, pawn, or knight. None of the above. Knight e4. So this is an instructive moment in the game. Why is this in-between move being flicked in? Well, I believe it is to duck a minor piece exchange. If white in this position captures on d4 with the pawn, this is a fine way for black to continue by taking the knight. And now white is in a somewhat awkward position, I believe. Not losing or anything, it's, it's an even position. What do I mean by awkward in this case? Well, white has to decide, do I want to play this position with an isolated pawn? Taking with the rook, in other words. Or do I want to take on the hanging pawns? I believe in both environments, white would prefer to have more pieces on board. When you're in possession of the isolated pawn or hanging pawn structure, you're sh you should be looking to play dynamically. And the more pieces, the more minor pieces, for example, on board, the more possibilities for, for your dynamic play to be successful. There are only two sets of minor pieces, though, in this situation. In playing knight to e4, white wants to play with three minor pieces on board. Okay. In the game, queen e7 is the reply. If you're concerned at all about these counterattacking moves like I am, <laughs> uh, I'd like to touch on these real quick. Uh, I'm always testing out lines where I may be down a pawn. I want to know where my compensation may be. So a quick answer to queen f5, you could, you could go at knight g3 and look to regain the pawn on your next move. Bishop d3 is also worth uh, investigating further. But that's a quick reply in response to queen f5. What about queen g6? What are we doing? Bishop d3. And considered best now for black is to play f5 very weakening. Here's how you could be continuing against a player who is just grabbing pawns. And here's the key move, queen b3. A very strong post. Currently white is down two pawns now, but winning. Pressure on the bishop. Pinned pawn. Overloaded rook. Knight c6, runs into rook takes knight, queen takes bishop. And if the bishop falls back, here comes knight takes f5. Crushing. 
Rook takes knight, rook takes bishop. Okay. One final note. This is a funny one. Suppose after queen g6, bishop d3, black says, I'm not scared about any knight move with the discovery against my queen, so I'm just going to take a pawn. Well, queen is now lost after knight to h4. Where does she go? No safe square. h7 is not safe either. You could go there. Everything else is defended directly, so queen h7, knight f6, she's one next. Okay. Counterattacking moves against the knight. No good. Queen e7 in this game, that is considered best. And now one more in between move before finally capturing on d4, and that is a3. Very useful. Hard to even assign a single negative to a3. This bishop is less flexible on a5. On an open board from a5, it only has seven options versus nine. B4 has nine options. Also, it's unprotected on a5. Okay, from here, we have e takes d4 on this move 13. So white takes on the isolated pawn when? When he could be sure that still three minor pieces, uh, three sets of minor pieces are present. Okay, from here, rook d8, very sensible. Putting pressure on the isolated pawn, looking to control this potential break. And from here, rook to c2. So this was one of my one of my main takeaways, I would say, is this little maneuver by Geary. Lifting the rook to the second rank. What is the idea? It is to next pivot on e2. And that's what we have. Bishop d7, rook to e2. So this is opposite the queen. Do know that there is also another pivot for the rook. For example, if instead of bishop d7... If knight c6, this is considered best, but just to highlight, here's a way you could get to the d2 square. You cut off the bishop from seeing that square with b4. And this move is not only defending the d4 pawn, but unpinning it. So this is a nice, nice little maneuver, rook c2 to d2. And we're gearing up, possibly for a, a central break soon enough. This could blast open. Okay, in this game, the rook is not making use of d2. It's rook to e2. Bishop c6, queen c2. And now it is already uh, starting to become very critical for black, these next couple moves. Uh, in just a couple moves, it's completely winning for white. So I'd like to touch on what is considered best right around here for black. In the game, bishop b6 is played putting pressure on d4, but as it turns out, that pressure is, um, that pressure can be ignored by white. There's a big storm brewing on the king's side. Uh, there is not a key defender around for black. There is not a king knight around on f6 or f8 defending the king's side. So considered best in this position is either to take the knight on e4 straight away or rook to c8. This is considered second rate. I want to highlight both of these continuations. Bishop takes knight, rook takes, and now knight to d7 with the idea to meet d5 with important move now e5, ensuring that this bishop's eyes don't easily open up to. An instruction, uh, a structure you have to weigh very carefully, of course. White has this isolated pawn. Um, how are you going to blockade it? Maybe putting the bishop on d6. Okay. One other continuation is to play, instead of the move played in the game, bishop b6, is to play rook c8. Queen gets out of the pin along the c file, and only now the capture. And the, the idea behind that fancy rook move is that it's stopping this pawn break d5 now at least for one move d5 in this position with the queen on d3 rather than c2 that would run into a fork so just a couple moves to keep in mind right here these are improving moves uh, for black in this position instead of bishop to b6 the move played in the game this or that would have been better and from here, we have rook f to e8. So there is something happening 
soon on the king's side. This last move, by the way, is allowing the rook to now get to e1, so it's quite convenient for white to invite that final piece into the mix. And black now goes with king to h8. This is now a winning position uh, for white. Considered best here is bishop to d5. It's not a fun move to play, to be sure, because white's now going to be able to push, would be able to push through with d5 in the following way. After the capture on d5, you can't take like this. Knight f6 is going to win the queen, maybe deliver checkmate. So this is considered the best continuation. It's not at all fun to play as black, um, but it is apparently savable. Not fun to have to take on this isolated pawn. So this was considered best in the game. It is king to h8. Why is this move being played? Well, there's soon going to be an accident happening on e6 and wants to get off of this diagonal. It's not hitting uh, with check in some variations. But here we go now. The move that's crying out to be played is a move that's going to unleash these two rooks. So the way you do that is by moving the knight. And that is knight, G, knight e to g5. A very sharp looking move. Threatening mate in one. How do you defend it? The knight is captured, and now the rooks come smashing through. e6 is hit a real lot. Rook takes e6. Pawn takes e6. Rook takes e6. And what does black do? He ends up capturing the rook. If something else is played, this is going to be mate. The queen is being being kicked from defending g5, so there's no good solution to these threats. All of these pieces are playing for white, and we have spectators on black's end. So what is tried is queen takes rook, bishop takes queen, bishop takes knight. And from here, we don't have the recapture. This is one of the ways forward, but the move played very strong. Queen f5 threatening. A mate in two, beginning with queen h3. This is a really big piece on e6. Defending g8 sets up these side file mates, you might say. So what's tried here is bishop to e4, distracting the queen. Uh, away from the mate and two threat, queen h3 now would allow bishop to h7. So we have queen takes bishop here. Is, is there some other try instead of bishop to e4? I had a look at this one. If rook takes d4 instead of this, uh, we can make use of the newly weakened f8 square. Queen f8, bishop f5, and one continuation, let's say after g6. G6, there's queen f7, queen f6, bishop e6. This is actually going straight to checkmate, so let's just play this one out. This, this, check, and then checkmate. That's one way the game could end. One variation after rook takes, um, rook takes d4 in this position. Uh, I should have also mentioned after rook takes d4, this is stopping queen h3 because the rook could block. Black would actually be winning in this position right here. But, okay, rook takes d4 is met well with queen f8, leading to mate. In this game, it's bishop to e4. Queen takes bishop. And now rook takes d4. Some other try besides this, such as rook to e8, can be met well with h4. And this is essentially inviting another... Um, element into the attack, another pawn into the attack. So what do you do here? If you're taking the pawn, it's going to be mate. If you're playing g4, you just lose the pawn. Queen's still defending, looking for mate on h5. And if black tries to develop, now we have these ideas. This guy is a big attacker in this position. Black has to give up the rook for bishop at this, at this point. And this is still too much imbalance queen and three pawns versus the two miners and a rook but two clumsy miners and the rook very difficult to find uh, coordination with these pieces okay in this game what is tried is rook takes d4 now a very nice move 
of course, well aware of the threats Black has now. Queen F3, defending mate, and threatening mate on H5. Game continues with G4. Queen F3, King H7, we have the check. King H6, and one final move, Bishop to C2, and Black resigns. There's no good solution here for Team Black. Uh, we have a mate threat coming up by way of h8, g7. Have a look at two continuations. Let's say the rook plays here. We could have check on h8. Check on g7. King here, queen there. King here, queen there for mate. And if the king goes here, it's just a mate like this. One final test line is this one right here. Let's say after bishop to c2, you know, that's stopping mate as well. Let's say the rook goes here, defending g7. There's now queen to f4. King here, there's queen f5. g5, check, checkmate. The king goes here, there's check, checkmate. And some other line, if the king... Well, if the king goes here, it's mate straight away. Oh, one final one is in response to this check right here. If g5 is played right now, instead of king to h5, the queen can make use of f6, g6, and then finally h6 for mate. So however you slice it, it's not going to end well for team black in this position. There's also a pin on board if the knight's trying to move, taking the rook with still threats of coming into that h8 square. Bad news for Team Black, however you slice it. So a very nice game by Geary, very nice uh, build up there in the center with the rooks forming a battery on the e-file, and then they are unleashed with that star move, knight to e5, the move that was really crying out to be played in that position. Let's have a look at the tail of the tape on this one, and we could see just how accurate Geary's play was. He's coming in with a 98% accuracy. The big moments right around this move, 16, bishop b6 area. And then at this point, rook f e1, king to h8. As, as mentioned, bishop d5 was best, but uh, wasn't spotted there. And it was downhill for team black from that point on. Uh, no inaccuracies, mistakes, or blunders for Geary. A couple blunders for Gukesh, coming in with an 87% accuracy. Anyhow, as usual, feel free to leave any feedback to this video in the comment section below. Hope you enjoyed it, and maybe took a thing or two away. That's all for now. Take care.